Hey everybody, this is Blake here, and welcome to my review of Texas Chainsaw 3D, the seventh entry in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, and I believe it's the fourth reboot. <laughs> um, in re retrospect, I don't think they should have made a franchise out of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, yeah, the original is great, but if you actually analyze it, you'd realize that there's very lim little about it that can be emulated for a sequel. Uh, when I look at Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Hellraiser, they all have very easily defined uh, strengths, and you could really roll with those strengths and create sequels out of them. So whether it was the creepy cinematography of Halloween or the chilling score or just the demented creativity of the Hellraiser, Nightmare on Elm Street movies, you could see sequels being made from that. But with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the direction is very minimalist, the writing is very simplistic, the acting is often amateurish, and when you just take each and little aspect of filmmaking, there's nothing about it that's exceptional. I can't see how you could make a sequel out of that. Uh, but luckily that movie worked because it's one of those rare instance, instance, instances where all of its strengths and weaknesses alike just got together and created perfection. Um, but I really do believe that its success was a fluke. Tobe Hooper, or Toby Hooper, I don't know how, exactly how you pronounce his name, um, he has yet to make a great movie since then. And all the Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequels are flat in comparison. So uh, it was a, definitely a great movie, but at the same time I just don't believe... Uh, it was anything more than a fluke. So what uh, Hooper thought of, which was actually a pretty creative idea, was that for the first sequel, he would do the total opposite of the original. Um, so if the original was low-key, the sequel would be over the top. If the original was brutal and gritty, but mostly psychological when it came to its violence, uh, the sequel would be incredibly gory. And uh, Whereas the first one was grim, the sequel would be incredibly campy. It was an, it was an interesting idea, but unfortunately audiences didn't respond to it very well. It wasn't particularly well liked and it didn't make a lot of money at the box office it has developed a cult following and many people do really like it as for myself it's been so long since i've seen it i cannot really say i did not like it at the time but at the same time uh, it seems like it's growing on me at least when i remember i just remember the good stuff like te uh like a uh, dennis hopper fighting leatherface with a chainsaw i thought that was awesome at the time and it's that kind of stuff that's really uh stayed with me, so maybe I would enjoy it if I gave it another shot. We'll just have to see. Uh, but as I said, it didn't do really, really well with the fans or uh, in terms of money making, so they tried to go back to what made the original so good and that it would be more serious. But in the end, it just they ended up just making a, a typical slasher with Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Um, it was acceptable for what it was, but at the same time, it didn't stand out either. And um, when it was released, that was when the slasher genre was kind of uh, suffering from fatigue. People were losing interest in it, so it didn't do very well financially either, even though it's okay. It seems like people either love or hate the second one, where everybody is practically totally indifferent when it comes to the third one. So a few years later, they make Texas Chainsaw Massacre the next generation. Now, it has been so, so long since I've seen this movie. But all I can remember about it is that it was incredibly boring. It seemed like they wanted to emphasize the writing much more. They convolute the story. Uh, they add in all this conspiracy nonsense. It almost seemed like they were trying to intellectualize the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And it was really boring. <laughs> That's all I'll say about it. Everybody hated it. And uh, even though it had a pretty decent cast in retrospect, like Matthew McConaughey and I think Renee Zellweger, and, um, which was one of their first roles, uh, it, it bombed heavily at the box office and it killed the franchise dead in its tracks. Um, so years later, um, Michael Bay decided to remake it, uh, and he only did it for its name value, which pissed me off at the time, but I went ahead and watched it, and you know what? It was okay as far as remakes go. Um, I thought they did a good job when it came to the characters, fleshing them out. Uh, the cast was pretty inspired. I recognized pretty much everybody, and it was a very polished looking film. The total opposite of what the visual style of the original was, but it's probably better to not try to be just like the original. Unfortunately, it's too obvious that they cut, they either cut out or trimmed down the kill scenes, so it made all the attacks seem rather limp. And uh, that really crippled that movie to where it could have been good. It was almost really good, but in the end it just became okay. Uh, but that was a financial success, and fans were okay with it. <laughs> so they made Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning, which was a prequel. 
it is it's on on the same level as the remake, but it's weird because it's much better when it comes to the kills and the tension. Um, they don't pull any punches. It's definitely hardcore, but it also had a lot of uh, mistakes in terms of like a character gets caught in a bear trap, but then later on he's seen running around fine. It has a lot of dumb moments like that, and the characters are pretty bland. But uh, it was, I think, fairly enjoyable as a slasher anyway. Uh, but even though it was a modest success, they pretty much had wrote themselves in a corner in that the remake ended with Leatherface getting his arm chopped off, and you can't do too many prequels uh, because the ending is a foregone conclusion. So it seemed like the franchise was once again dead. Until now. Texas Chainsaw 3 3D, and I'm sorry it took so long to actually get to this, but they're are claiming, the filmmakers are claiming that this is the true sequel. It's ignoring all the other entries except the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I have to imagine is confusing to some who might be more familiar with the remake than the original, original especially with the younger audiences, but whatever. Uh, my problem with this, and the reason why I knew this movie would suck, is that Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, 4, uh, well, actually just those two, and I guess you can count the remake, were also reboots that made similar claims. So... What is this going to, how is this going to be any different from those? And that's why I think this franchise sucks as a whole because all the sequels are ashamed of the other sequels. Uh, why can't you just make good movies and follow through with them? But no, they keep trying to pretend that the, their past mistakes didn't exist. So, uh, luckily though, I can be smug because this movie sucks. It's not as bad as Next Generation. I, I hope I'm getting that title right, by the way. Uh, but it's definitely bad. Um, let me start with the good points. The gore is pretty epic. Um, at least for the most part. It's not too sleazy, but it is definitely very brutal and hard to watch. Um, sometimes I even cringed. My only complaint there was I felt the final kill was a bit too cartoonish. It, the CGI was too blatant, and um, even though I liked it in concept and execution, it just seemed kind of odd and out of place. But uh, the rest of the kills are awesome. But at the same time, it's not the bloodbath I was hoping for. This isn't full of carnage and death. There's only a handful of on-screen kills, and um, that could if they had more of that, if it was just a typical dumb slasher, I would have enjoyed it much more, at least as a typical dumb slasher. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it does everything else wrong. The characters are totally unlikable. So here's here's pretty much the setup. The main girl, um, she was adopted from the Sawyer family, uh, who was Leatherface's family. Actually, I guess I should start from the beginning. It opens up with footage of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and proof that that was a fluke is the way they edit it makes it seem kind of lame, uh, whereas how it's done in the original movie is awesome, but whatever. Uh... And after, immediately after that, the sheriff comes over with the intent of arresting Leatherface, but there's kind of a standoff, the mob shows up, and a shootout ensues, and the entire Sawyer family is killed, although Leatherface himself is never found. Uh, the only known survivor is a little girl, or a, she was an infant child, who's taken by one of the, the people in the mob and adopted by them. So she grows up into an 18-year-old, even though, or like a 20-year-old, I don't know how old she is, but she's supposed to be 40 years old, if you consider the actual timeline, because it's obvious this movie takes place present day with all the iPhones and stuff, so that was a pretty big fucking mistake. Um, so uh, she grows up not knowing of where she came from, but then she receives a letter from um, her grandmother from her real family um, who she, who's just died, and she has left her a mansion in her will, so she decides to her and her, a bunch of her friends are going to go uh, check it out and see what the mansion's all about and hopefully find out where she came from. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Leatherface is also staying at the mansion, and he starts killing everybody. Uh, the reason why I hate everybody is that they're either incredibly generic and disposable, or they're incredibly unlikable, and it seems like the movie really wants you to hate everybody. Uh, for example, the main girl, she has her uh, boyfriend, but he is having kind of an affair with her best friend, who is dating his best friend, and I mean, it's like a freaking soap opera. And it just, I don't really understand why any of that was there, as there's no real payoff. The main girl never finds out about any of this. Um, so it just seems like it's there to make them less sympathetic, so we can root for their deaths. And that is later going to bite this movie in the ass. Uh, really, the only marginally sympathetic character is the slut best friend's uh, boyfriend, and just because he has no personality. And I'm, I'm sure if they fleshed him out too, I would have hated him also. The main girl, 
she's just kind of a watered down version of the protagonist from uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning who herself was a watered down version of Jessica Biel's character from the original remake um, but when they actually start to develop her the actress cannot sustain um, her performance to make it work uh, she starts kind of going crazy as the movie progresses but it's just difficult to swallow and her decisions never really make a whole, any sense it was just kind of a poorly written character but uh the big problem, too, is that they spend so much time fleshing these people out. But then, for the most part, they get wiped out almost at the same time. So it's like, and this is halfway into the movie, too. So it's like, why did you spend so much time with these people? Uh, and then I thought the movie was going to end when pretty much everybody dies. But no, it keeps going for another 40 minutes. Uh, so I hated them just because they're incredibly unlikable. But they're also really stupid. Everything they do is there so it's easier to get them killed uh, or uh, you know to drive the story like yeah let's leave all this information about this girl's family right next to her alone so she could find out what really happened that was just retarded that's not even the worst thing either everything these people do is moronic uh, the acting is pretty weak well it's okay when people are just acting normal but when they have to actually do something different that's when it starts to becoming becoming really awkward like for example when a character starts going crazy she oversells it or when a character is revealed to be evil they're just too sinister and too smug um it's just overacting there and uh the worst actress though has to be the best friend who just was way too slutty um it seems like just when she just stands there she's acting like the token slut and she's posing all sexually it's just too much uh but for the most part, I guess it's just average. It's weird seeing uh, Clint Eastwood's son, though, because he looks just like his dad. Um, doesn't quite have the acting talent, but he looks... I mean, it was like it was surreal just how much he looks like Clint Eastwood. Uh, so that's all I can really say. Them, I hated everybody. And then once people start dying, it's done in a very redundant way. And it's just like the original where people just wander and stumble onto Leatherface's lair. Uh... But whereas it worked in the original because you weren't really sure who the main character was and Leatherface's sudden appearances were genuinely startling, here it's just, it just since you know they're going to die and the, the attempts at building tension don't work because you're just wanting the movie to get to the money shot, so it was kind of uh, boring for that reason. Uh, but really, I will concede that... I thought the movie was just a subpar slasher for the first two thirds. Um, sure, the lack of nudity was incredibly jarring. They kept having like these almost uh, naked scenes, but it's almost as if the, the actresses had no nudity clauses or something because they'd get almost naked. Like one girl gets the part of her uh, her shirt ripped, so and she's wearing no bra, but the shirt perfectly covers her breasts or the slut gets in her underwear but that's the extent of what you get there and of course it was incredibly stupid but most slashers are incredibly stupid uh but the third act i don't know how to explain this without spoiling too much but let's just say that they make leatherface into an anti-hero they focus on the town conspiracy which was also dumb because you saw what happened in the beginning so why spend so much time on that uh but um, when Leather, Leather, whenever Leatherface kills somebody, it's the people who deserve to die. And we're supposed to be rooting for them. And that's when I realized that we were always supposed to be rooting for Leatherface, that all of his previous victims were unsympathetic. And I'm not, I don't think you should do that. Everybody says that Jason became an anti-hero, but I disagree. I've always felt, even when the movies focused more on Jason than his victims, uh, he was always supposed to be the villain. Um, I was always supposed to feel scared for his victims, although there was the occasional like rapist and something, but... Uh, for the most part, I never felt that I was supposed to be rooting for Jason anyway. But with this one, I guess the movie just wants you to excuse all of Leatherface's past misdeeds. Um, and we're supposed to feel sorry for him. And that, that just, I hated that. It just felt so out of place and so poorly developed. I like the idea of Leatherface being a victim in his own right. But they just handle it in such a half-assed way that I was just Furious. Throughout the rest of the movie, I was just mostly indifferent, sometimes amused because there are some unintentionally funny scenes. Like, for example, when the, the main girl is 
Rachel's running from Leatherface for the first time. She keeps tripping over stuff, and the audience with me was all laughing, and it was kind of fun in that regard. But when it came to the finale, I was just fuming. Uh, so uh, that's when it really descended into bad movie territory. I mean, it was already kind of there to begin with, but I didn't hate it until that final act. Uh, so is there anything else I could say? Oh yeah, for some reason they cast Marilyn Burns, who played Sally in the original, uh, as the grandmother. You only see her in one scene. And I thought that was kind of confusing, because they show uh, Marilyn Burns as Sally during the opening scenes of the film, so it's almost like she's playing two characters in one movie. I don't know if they really thought that through. And they did the same thing with, uh, I think his name's Gunnar Henson, who played the original Leatherface. He shows up as one of the family members in the very beginning. Uh, But I could overlook that just because, you know, he always wore a mask in the original movie. So I don't think most people would really notice that. So I don't know. It just seemed like this movie made one bad decision after another. It's just a bad movie that ultimately becomes atrocious by the ending. Uh, So I definitely would say it's inferior to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, 3, uh, both the prequel and the remake, Um, but it is at least better than the insanely boring Next Generation. So would I recommend it? No. (laughs) But if you are a huge fan of the franchise, you're going to see it anyway. The 3D is, it has its moments where it really does enhance the tension, or uh, they'll, they'll throw like the chainsaw at the screen, and that was kind of cool, but for the most part, I didn't notice it, so I wouldn't really say it's worth watching in 3D if you do see it. Uh, but if you aren't a big fan of this franchise, or have always been indifferent, maybe you've seen a few and you liked them okay, but you not enough to see the weaker sequels, don't bother with this one. Uh, if you'd like to read my written review, please check the link in my description. Uh, make sure you go check out my website. I just released my top 12 favorite movies list, the written version on there, and I reviewed Ninja's Creed, which was even worse than this one. I think the next one I'll review is 28 Days Later, but uh, do that and follow me on Twitter and all that stuff. Uh, I apologize for this video being too long. I usually don't like it to be, it's like 17 minutes, but I got, uh, I got sidetracked quite a bit. So um, that is all. I'll see you guys later.